are on the road in Tokyo, Japan, broadcasting for the third of our three days of specials. Japan is getting ready to mark the third anniversary of one of the world's worst atomic disasters. It was March 11, 2011, when a massive 9.0 magnitude earthquake triggered a devastating tsunami that struck Japan's northeast coast. What began as a natural disaster quickly cascaded into a man-made one as system after system failed at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Three of the six reactors suffered meltdowns, releasing deadly radiation into the atmosphere and the ocean. Three years later, Japan is still reeling from the impact of the disaster. More than 340,000 people became nuclear refugees, forced to abandon their homes and their livelihoods. Entire towns were forced to evacu evacuate, including Futaba, a town that housed part of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Before March 11, 2011, nearly 7,000 people lived in the town. Today, Futaba is a nuclear ghost town. The government relocated many of the residents to an abandoned school near Tokyo, where they lived in cramped, shared common areas. Many families to a room are provided with three box lunches per day. The refugees were given permits to return home to collect personal items, but only for two hours. Just before this broadcast, Democracy Now! producer Mike Burke spoke with an evacuee from Futaba. She was one of hundreds of anti-nuclear protesters who were outside the official residence of the Japanese Prime Minister demonstrating. My name is Yukiko Kameya. I'm from Fukuba, which was 2.1 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility. Right now, we've had evacuated, and we are living in a temporary housing in Tokyo in a space provided by the government. It's close here, so I'm coming here every Friday to demonstrate against the nuclear power facilities. When we fled Fukuba, we had nothing. We lost everything. We couldn't bring anything from our house. We didn't have a toothbrush. We didn't have a blanket. We didn't have a towels. We had nothing. It was truly a hell. And we thought it would be much better to die. But now we are here, and we can't really give up. We want to fight for this cause. When I fled from Futaba, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even have friends over or anything. But my people encouraged me to be standing here right now. Without any people's help, I couldn't be here. That's why I, I appreciate them and then I want to join them in their cause. And what, what is your message to the Japanese government and, and the world about nuclear power? I don't want anyone in the world to experience what we have experienced. We have houses in Futaba, but there's nothing there. Everything is robbed. All the furniture was broken. I can't really go back there. We know it. We don't want anyone in the world to be in the situation we are in. There are 59 children with thyroid problem, and there are hundreds more on the way. The real problem in Fukushima is children cannot go out and play. They have to stay inside, and this is not the way children should grow up. I don't want anyone in the world or Japan to experience this type of situation for children. So I want to stop nuclear facilities now, and I don't want them to be continued. Do you think you'll ever be able to return to your home? The Futaba where I lived is not livable, and the government says so. So I know we are never going back in my entire life. But for the Fukushima prefecture, it is still not safe. The radiation level is still very high, so I don't think it's safe, and I don't think we will go back there. And what is your assessment of how the government has handled the crisis? 
私はもう初めはねやっぱり期待しましたよね自分の国ですからでも私たちが思ったように動いてくれないですよ We expected our government to do a better job when this accident happened, but they don't really do what you want. They ignore all the problems we are having. There are, there are many young people between 15 and 18 in Fukushima who are in high school who have died suddenly. For example, this morning I saw an online story that a 17 year old died from leukemia. In the morning, when he, his mother came to wake him up, he was found dead in bed. Everyone says this was caused by the radiation level from nuclear accident, but our government never recognized it. And there are many children, 59 children with thyroid cancer, they will never recognize it as being caused by the radiation. We're standing right now outside the Prime Minister's official residency. What is your message to the Prime Minister? We told the Prime Minister many times, every week here, that we are against the reopening of the nuclear facilities, but it doesn't seem that he gets it. He just does whatever he wants to do anyway. In Futaba, when we had a meeting with TEPCO, we are told the facility is very, very safe. Now we know it is not safe at all. And we've been telling the Prime Minister it's not safe, so do not restart. But it doesn't seem like it's getting through to him. My real, um, my real feeling is that I want to go back to Futabamachi in Fukushima, but I know we can't go back. And uh, I dream of it every day, and I know we cannot go back. So I don't want anyone in the world to feel this way. We want to stop it now. Those were the words of Yukiko Kamea. She is a former resident of Futaba, which is the town where part of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is located. She fled her home after the nuclear meltdown and will likely never be able to return home. When we come back from break, we'll be joined by the former mayor of Futaba. Stay with us.
Fukushima refugee story. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. This is the third day of our broadcast from Tokyo, Japan, and the final day. Uh, we are talking about uh, moving in on the third anniversary of the Fukushima disaster. 19,000 people died or went missing on that day, March 11, 2011, and the days afterwards, when the earthquake triggered a tsunami, and three of the reactors at the Fukushima nuclear power plant melted down. We're joined right now by Futaba's former mayor, Katsutaka Idogawa. For years, he embraced nuclear power. Now he has become a vocal critic. He's featured in the film, Nuclear Nation. We welcome you to Democracy Now! and thank you for traveling two hours to join us here um, at the studios of NHK International for this conversation. Um, Mayor, explain what happened on that day. Special thanks to Mary Joyce, who's translating for you today. On that day, March 11, 2011, and the days afterwards, when you decided it was time for the thousands of people who lived in your town, Futaba, to leave. So on that day, there was an earthquake of the scale of something we'd never experienced before. It was a huge surprise. And at the time, I was just hoping that nothing had happened to the nuclear power plant. However, unfortunately, there was, in fact, an accident there. And then I worked with the many residents and thinking about how I could fully evacuate them from the radiation. You made a decision to evacuate your town before the Japanese government uh, told the people in the area to do this, but not before uh, the U.S. government told Americans to leave the area, and other governments said the same. Yes, uh, the Japanese government's information to evacuate became much later than that, and my mistake at the time was initially waiting to hear that. If I had made that decision even three hours earlier, I would have been able to prevent so many people from being so heavily exposed to radiation. However, as a result of that, unfortunately, several hundreds of people were directly affected by this radiation. Where did you decide to move the whole town? I was originally thinking about this at the time of the earthquake on March 11 first. However, at first I was waiting to rely on the government information to decide the timing for this. And so you moved the town to a school in the outskirts of Tokyo, is that right? The entire town to an abandoned school. Explain how you set up your government, your whole community, in this one building. Right at the start, we were unfortunately not able to evacuate all of the residents, and some actually did remain within parts of Fukushima Prefecture. 